Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So today's video is going to be a little different. I only had a couple hours to work in my garden this day and I decided just to get as much done as I possibly could. So I put on my work clothes, I turned on the camera and I just went for it. The first thing I started on is this little fence area. I have this Clematis Armandii Snowdrift that I had taken off the fence when we painted it. So I knew I needed to get it back up on the fence because it's this beautiful climber with white blooms that smell divine in the early spring. So I needed to get it back up there and it was just an absolute tangled mess. Off to the right, right here, I have a flowering maple called Tallini's Pink and this one my goal for this plant is to create a living wall right there kind of extending up the fence area so I have a piece of wire connected from the fence all the way up to the eave of my house and I just am training that Tallini's pink flowering maple all the way up this plant responds really well to pruning so I don't really have to worry about pruning it you know I can just kind of cut off the pieces that I need to cut off um, and then that that clematis armandii it I got it up there and it's looking really really good after cleaning up I was done with this area and decided to move on to the next part which is training up my climbing roses on my rose arch right here these two climbing roses are relatively new they're about a year old I planted them last November they are Eden climbers from that I purchased from heirloomroses.com and I am so so impressed with these roses they have grown so much I have been training them up this arch from Kinsman Garden Supply and I cannot wait for next spring when they really start blooming. I got some blooms this year but not a ton and I'm okay with that. I was really just focusing on growth this year and training them up this climbing arch um, and I just I absolutely cannot wait for it to be all completed and done. So the growth is just crazy and when I really focus on it it looks so good after I've trained it up the arch as you guys can see right here. I love it when it's all pruned and trained properly and I can't wait for it to reach the top. Next I went to my backyard and I started tackling these Superbina Sparkling Rosé from Proven Winners. I planted them here earlier this year thinking that it, they would get enough light but you can see they just are not blooming very well at all. I only get a handful of blooms. I I think it's just way, way too much shade for them. So I decided to transplant them today. When I transplant plants, I try and dig out a big, as big of a root ball as I possibly can and then immediately go and put them in their new hole. So you can see I dug out, I have five plants. They were four inch pots and I dug them out and then took them to my front yard where they're gonna get a lot more sun and I think that they will be a lot happier. My mom has these plants in her garden and they are absolutely gorgeous so I really hope they start blooming really well this is the area that I decided to tackle today I have this Spanish lavender right here that's looking really really good and I've decided to transplant it you can see my flagstone pathway right there was just getting congested with the lavender and then the bearded iris on the left side so having my garden tour I ha I'm in a local garden tour in May of this upcoming year I knew I wanted people to walk on this pathway and so I knew I had to kind of open it up a little bit so I decided to transplant both of these plants put them in different areas of my garden and it's not a bad idea because it was time for me to divide these bearded iris anyway and you do want to divide your bearded iris pretty often just so that they don't get compacted because if they get um, if they grow together too much they just won't bloom as well so you can see I just kind of rip them apart and then I will plant those in another area of my garden 
So over here, I am using my wonderful, wonderful power planter attachment to my drill. This was gifted to me from Power Planter. Thank you so much. They gave it to me to plant bulbs and to plant my seedlings in my flower field, my cut flower garden, but I have been using it like crazy just to dig some holes and loosen up the soil when planting plants. So you can see I used it when I was planting the Superbina Sparkling Rosé and I kind of did a full swoop kind of around this area and I'm hoping that will grow together and it will be really really gorgeous in the spring so I'll just have this swoop of pink then I did something that I can't believe I did I have these I call them my dollar store glads my dollar my dollar store gladiolas they're back here they they're very beautiful when they bloom they're gorgeous they have kind of a bubblegum pink color however I have to say I don't love the foliage on gladiolas I kind of think they're messy they kind of fall all over the place and so I made the decision to take them out which was a tough decision for me I couldn't decide if I wanted to do it and then I finally thought you know what it's okay <laughs> it is okay you can change your your plans for gardening you don't have to be stuck to a plant you know and I've had these in here for a couple years they are absolutely thriving but again I just don't like foliage of gladiolas I love the blooms but I just don't like the foliage so I took them all out I have a feeling that I'm gonna be taking them out um, you know they're gonna keep growing up because there was a lot of corms or bulbs I'm not sure what you what you call them um, but there, there was a lot left over in that area so I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking those out for quite a while then I bought these other three Spanish lavender. Spanish lavender does really well in our area, and I decided to plant them around this Texas privet that I have. I thought it would be really pretty, and it would keep um, keep them away from that pathway so that it wouldn't get too congested as people were walking through. Spanish lavender, unfortunately, doesn't last very long in our area. Um, you know, I think it only lasts two or three years before it gets to the point where it just gets woody and you know you kind of have to take it out and yes you can prune it back and you can um, take care of it but you know I just find it easier just to take it out and restart with new fresh plants you I, I've done cuttings before if you don't want to spend money on fresh plants but they're really not that expensive so every couple years I kind of just start over and put new plants in almost like treating them as like biennial, biennials or annuals um, every three years so using my power planter dug them in put them in I did not use any fertilizer or any Anything like that for this lavender you really you just put them in a hole give them a, the tiniest bit of water and kind of just not worry about it I did want to show you all my iceberg roses with my uh, super tunia jazzberry and my Helen von Stein lamb's ear I am so happy with this combination I think it is gorgeous so thank you for joining me today and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today and get some stuff done